cookie and I can walk out, I can eat it as I go, you know, it's not big or messy. It's not like a caramel apple that it, it turns into a big to-do. So the tribute store was really good. So uh, that was number four. So number three was the Minions Cafe. So we had never been to the Minions Cafe before. Uh, the last time we had been to Universal, it was not built yet. It was in process, but it was not built yet. And it's a lot of fun in there. Like, I'm not even a big Minions fan, but uh, it's done very well. The theming's really good. All of the rooms have different Minions elements to it that are really cool from like googly eyes on a bunch of stuff to like bananas in a vending machine to like uh pet rocks and glasses and these are all minions things uh but it, it was really cool uh we we sat down and ate there and we had a grilled cheese that was pressed like a waffle and it had green tomato soup with gummy bears in it but the gummy bears were not gummy they were made of tomato so they were basically like little tomato gummy bears without the gummy part of it uh that were in the soup and it was really good i was like that was uh for universal food that really surprised me it was good it, it you know, it was the equivalent of a Andy's lunchbox or Woody's lunchbox kind of thing where grilled cheese, tomato soup, and they had tots. But the tots were minions. They were little minions and they were very crunchy. Um, I think that they, that, I think we really liked the minion tots, which was surprising because, uh, again you kind of expect that like for sides that they're usually not that great but they were really good or crunchy held up really well um i think i caught myself after we were done eating the grilled cheese with the soup using the actual minions tots in the soup too so it was it was tasty it was a uh, it was a really good place just to sit down take a break and uh recoup because we had plenty of room we had privacy it was uh it was nice. It was, it was a relaxing moment in an otherwise crazy day because it was Christmas weekend. So uh, now we're getting into the best parts of the weekend. So number two was the hot butter beer. So I believe I've talked about the hot butter beer before, but if I haven't, the hot butter beer is fantastic. Uh, I don't like the frozen butter beer, and I don't really like the regular butter beer. They both taste uh, too too buttery, like it actually feels like it coats my mouth. Which, if you've watched my videos this far, you know I hate that feeling. So I don't really love the frozen or cold butter beer, but the hot butter beer was perfect this weekend and so much so that it made my number two on my top list because it was a little cool you know like for, for uh orlando cool it was like 70 degrees and uh the hot butter beer just hit so well um just being able to take that and sort of like walk around afterwards was really nice uh, it, it basically tastes like a hot chocolate with butterscotch instead. And it's got like a la layer on the top of it that's almost like, it's almost like marshmallow, maybe it's fluff. Um, but it, it goes very well on the hot butter beer and you would think like, I'm not a hot drink person. So the fact that I'm promoting a hot drink in Orlando is crazy, but it was really good. Uh, of all the stuff that you could kind of get in Harry Potter uh, land on both sides of the parks, uh, the ice cream is up there that I've had before. But the hot butter beer, I think, tops it. I think the hot butter beer is probably the favorite thing that, even though I don't really love going to the Harry Potter area, which I'll talk about shortly in the top five worst, I think I would probably go just for a hot butter beer. And then uh, number one, the top best thing I, I did in Universal this weekend with uh, Christmas was the parade. 
not really a surprise, but uh, Universal has uh, bl- uh, not blimps, um, balloons that are like the Macy's Day Parade balloons. Uh, but they're all to their specific IPs. So there is, um, there was a giant gingerbread man from Shrek. It was a giant minion. It was a giant donkey dragon abomination also from Shrek. Um, we've been to that, um, parade before but I just think it's much better than the Disney one which is crazy to say but I really do think the Universal Parades sorry the Universal Christmas Parade is done really well not like they they incorporate all of their ips in some way to christmas um they they have a lot of they have a lot of characters that you see that are very interesting to see in the parade uh but the best part of it is just uh the path that santa goes down the entire parade goes down but where santa stops is right outside their giant tree in the middle of Universal Studios. So the tree is not lit uh, at the parade time. It's not lit all day. Obviously, it's it's sunny out, so you can't put the lights up there. So And it's not lit until a parade. Santa comes around. They do the whole parade. But Santa comes around and stops in his sleigh outside of the tree. And then through the power of his magic and everyone's being there giving goodwill uh he lights up the tree gives a uh one two three and the tree lights up with all of its spectacular colors so that moment alone i think tops the disney parade uh for christmas just because it's done really well it's very impactful because you've now watched this entire parade and you're standing near this dark tree that Santa lights up. And then right afterwards, it snopes. So uh, if you don't know what snope is, I think I've mentioned it before, but at both parks, um, because Florida cannot make snow, they make soap that comes down that looks like snow. And they, it's called Snope because it's snow and soap. So it was snoping uh, right afterwards. So it, it's just, it's a very nice moment. There's also Funfetti that shot out of the sky. And <clears throat> it's done really well. Um, it, it was my favorite moment of just being like, all right, this is Christmas time. And this is a nice, nice moment. So. So that was my top for the top five best. So now we get into the top five worst. I'm going to try not to be too negative. I'm probably going to get more heated at my Disney top, uh, top 10 worst, but at least these ones are, I think tame ish because I only had to deal with them one day, right? So, let's just get into it. So, um, this was, I should say, this was my experience. This, other people might not have these experiences at this time, but this is the busiest time of year in Orlando at the parks. So, if this is the only time of year you can come here, it's going to be intense. So, just keep that in mind. Um there's there's other better times to come is what i'm trying to say but i'm here now and this was my experience so number five pretty easy one right out the gate the park close times so what 
blows my mind with Universal is that the parks close at 9 and 9.30, I think at the latest uh, during this time. Which is real tough when they open at like 9. So just the park close times is one of my big gripes because it's always like you're fighting against the clock because there's not fast pass at universal right they have their express thing which <laughs> i didn't put on this list but uh, i'll give you the very quick one about that so disney express pass this this weekend um was anywhere between or oh, the last the last few days of of December right have been uh, the last week of Christmas I should say into into January have been anywhere from 360 to four hundred dollars a person for Universal's skip the line option. four hundred dollars a person to skip the line so let's just say that doesn't exist unless you have an extra four hundred dollars to throw at that which if that's the case like let me know if uh if you need a travel agent, uh, I'm not in the game, but I could join it in order to, like, maybe get one of those express passes from you kind of thing. Anyway. So, let's say you don't have $400 to do the express pass skip the line. Uh, so, the park close times is what is killer. Because, let's say Hagrid's, right? two hours generally it was anywhere from two anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours to at most three hours so we'll average two hours just for that ride so two hours of the and again let's say they open at 9 a.m okay you go there first thing in the morning 9 uh 9 a.m two hours you're done it's 11 a.m Okay, now you want to go get food. You wait in the food line. That's coming, but you wait in a food line for 30 minutes to an hour, depending on where you are. If you are in, uh, if you are in Harry Potter land, no less than 30 minutes to an hour. If you are in a different area, maybe 20 minutes. <coughs> So, and then you want to go, all right, well, now I've got some food. Let me go jump into another one of the rides. Most 